The trade deadline has come and gone. And gone from the White Sox is tonight's scheduled starter, Jake Peavy. We'll update you on who else is trading places during the game tonight. The Indians were quiet today, but their bats were not last night in the eighth inning, rallying to win game two of this four-game series. The Tribe looks to make it 10 straight wins at home next on Sports Time Ohio. From Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, it's Indians baseball. Tonight, the Tribe looks to keep the home mojo rolling as they take on the Chicago White Sox in game three of their four-game series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians are just simply red hot right now. They've won six straight overall, equaling their longest win streak of the season, and they've won nine in a row here at home, their longest win streak at home in the last couple of years, and they're getting that timely late hit in the ballgame. It always helps when you score late in the ballgame, especially at home, and they have, have had some big hits. Ryan Rayburn, walk-off home run. They're celebrating here, and then Giambi follows that with a walk-off, the oldest guy to ever do it in the history of baseball. They celebrated that night, and then Rayburn comes back last night, a big two-out. Base hit to drive in a pair. They take the lead. They add on from that point. The magic is back here at Progressive Field. They outscored their opponents in their nine-game winning streak, 46 to 23. The starters have been outstanding. They have a belief right now that they can win any game they're into when they play at home. Well, that's a great mindset to have, especially because the Detroit Tigers keep winning. So the Indians got to keep the W's coming to stay pace with Detroit. Last couple of nights, they've relied on the late inning heroics to win the ball game here at Progressive Field. Tonight, they'll hand the ball to Corey Kluber. The calm, cool, collected, silent assassin takes the hill for the Tribe as the Indians look to make it seven in a row. The play-by-play -play is next. The return throw, not in time. He might have got spiked. Here comes another run to score. Ryan Rayburn off the bench delivers in the clutch. Here comes Rayburn. Chisholm Hall racing home. He scores two. 
And we welcome you in to Progressive Field on a gorgeous night for baseball as the Indians look to continue their hot roll against Chicago. Corey Kluber warming up for the tribe. Let's take a look at Robin Ventura's starting lineup for Chicago here tonight. Alejandro De Aza will lead it off, followed by Alexi Ramirez. Alex Rios bats third, then Adam Dunn in the cleanup spot, followed by Paul Canerco. Connor Gillespie will hit sixth, Diane Vicieto seventh, Gordon Beckham eighth, and Josh Fegley, the catcher, will bat ninth. Corey Kluber on the mound for the Indians, his 18th start this year. And Kluber is 7-5, and five, a 374 earned run average. He is 1-1 one and one in two starts against the White Sox this year. And he's pitched 12 and two-thirds innings, nine hits and six runs, and he struck out 10. So we'll see if Corey Kluber can keep this rolling. He's pitched very well here as of late. Let's check the Kia Indians defense for the try. Brantley's in left, Bourne in center, Stubbs in right. Avila's at third, Cabrera at short, Kipnis at second, Reynolds at first, Santana behind the plate. D.J. Rayburn will call the balls and strikes tonight. John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, is at first. James Hoy at second. Bob Davidson down at third. We're ready to go now as Deaza steps in. And Corey Kluber delivers a first pitch fastball for strike one. 77 degrees, our game time temperature tonight. Deaza fouls it right back. It's 0-2. Now that the trading deadline has officially come and gone, some of the anxiety that players may have been feeling has passed. Thank goodness it's over. Now people can relax. Yeah. Although they're still trading with the waiver wire now into August, end of August. Nice Strike pitch. three called. Nails the inside corner. One away. Let's check this pitch out on our Nissan pitch tracker. It doesn't get any better. That's the comeback fastball. A lot of left-handers give up on that with Corey Kluber on the mound, but that's a four-seamer that just comes back over the plate. And, I mean, that's a perfect pitch. Alexei Ramirez will step in now. And a strike over the outside corner. Driven to deep right. Back is Stubbs. Still going back. Can't make the play. It's just over his head. Ramirez into second base. He'll stop there with a double. Looks like he got fooled a little bit on that ball. Ramirez hit that ball very well. Line drive, and it's going to slice. But he didn't start backpedaling. He didn't get a real good jump on it as he turned sideways. I didn't think he thought it was going to go that far. And by the time he can turn it on, that ball just kept going over his head and wasn't able to get to it. It'll go as a double. So Ramirez is 26th on the season. That's one of those balls that are hit right at you, and it's tough to judge how far it's going to go, and it carried. Fastball in there. Or a called strike to Alex Rios. His name was rumored to be on the move the last couple of days. Last night he fouled a ball yeah. off of his foot, and he had to leave the game. Lifts one on the infield. Jason Kipnis calls for it. Two down. As you said, the trading deadline officially has come and gone, but you can still make trades through the end of August, but now a player has to clear waivers in order to be sent to another team. So it just adds a, another layer of difficulty to potentially getting a deal done. You don't normally see blockbusters, but you can still find a player that can maybe help you. Sure you can. And, and you know, you'll see some clubs that will go ahead and put players out on the waiver wire to see if they'll take them, guys with big contracts, to see if uh, that will happen. That happened with Jose Canseco years ago where the Yankees tried to block him from going to Boston, and they said, okay, you can have him. And the Yankees ended up with Canseco. They didn't really want him. They just didn't want him to go somewhere where he could beat him.
Adam Dunn has had a pretty good series, three for seven. Two of his three hits have been doubles. Including last night, a two-out, two-run double in the first inning. They got the White Sox on the board first. That one just missed inside. Similar pitch, the one he struck out Deaza on. And now the count is two and one. The two one offering is fouled out of play. Typical at bat for Adam Dunn. He is second in the American League and pitches per plate appearance. He averages 4.38 pitches per plate appearance. Guy who will draw a lot of walks because he does have a good eye and he'll be patient. But he also swings and misses a ton. Kluber ready with a 2-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Kluber a couple of Ks in the first. And the Indians are coming to bat. Take a look at Terry Francona's starting lineup tonight, brought to you by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. Michael Bourne, hitless in the series, will lead it off, followed by Nick Swisher and then Jason Kipnis. As Dribble Cabrera, Carlos Santana, and Mike Avilas in the middle, followed by Michael Brantley, Mark Reynolds, and Drew Stubbs. Jose Quintana, the left hander on the hill. And up and in with a fastball for ball one. Quintana has made three starts against the Indians this year. He's 1-0 and with a ERA of three. The 1-1 pitch. Bourne drives it deep left center field. They won't get it. One hops the big wall and on his way to second base with a leadoff double is Michael Bourne. Well, Michael's been driving a ball to the left field a little bit lately. This time he gets a fastball and it's middle in. And he takes the inside approach and takes it the other way and hit it very well. So the Indians off to a good start. Double number 16. And they have their leadoff man aboard. Mm -hmm. 
Nick Swisher, one for seven in the series. He takes a strike. Swisher batting 213 on the year with a runner in scoring position. Ground ball. In the hole, it gets by Ramirez. Bourne got a late break, but he will make it to third. Well, there's one of those plays when you're on second base. You just have to make sure the ball goes through. And Bourne did. He wanted to go to third, but had to hesitate and stop. And then once Ramirez, he couldn't knock it down, and he sees that he was heading back to second. He's still able to kick it back into gear and get to third. He thought he was going to make the play. He sees it go through. You move up the base. Swisher gets a base hit, so it's first and third now and nobody out. Ramirez made a play like that last night, able to go to second base with it. Even if he comes up with it, he wouldn't have got Swisher at first. The only play would have been born if he went to third. He did not, but he gets there anyway. Kipnis slowly taps it towards second base. They run Swisher back. They get Kipnis. And now Swisher's caught in a rundown. The run is scored. Indians are on the board, one to nothing. Swisher staying on the run. Now they throw it away. He'll How go to second base that? as the ball went into the photo bay, and now he'll get third. You know, that's a pretty heads up play by Swisher just to get in the rundown because you want the run to score. And then they botch the play up on the fielder's choice. I mean, they did the right thing. Beckham did getting Swisher in the middle. Now Dunn gives it up. Ramirez. Flips it to Quintana, gets it back to Beckham, and then Quintana get out of the way. You're supposed to follow your throw, and the pitcher shouldn't be in there anyway because the catcher was over there. He ended up messing up the play. They did it properly. <laughs> Swisher did a better job of staying alive. It didn't look like a terrible throw by Beckham. Maybe no, Quintana short-armed it a little bit. But he'll be charged with the air, I do believe. Yeah, that was on Quintana. It is the pitcher who yeah. gets the air for not catching the throw from Beckham. Now the infield drawn in for his dribble Cabrera as the tribe tries to cash in. Smoked the catcher in the helmet, he too. Sure did on the follow through. Cabrera doinked Figley. You know, that's the, uh, the thing. That's their 75th error this year. The White Sox had 70 errors as a team all of last year. There's the backswing right on top of the helmet. That's a wake up call. You see a lot of hitters do that nowadays. Chopped up the middle. Backhanded nicely by Beckham. And Cabrera retired for out number two. Let's check that uh, defense of the Chicago White Sox. You got a real good look at that infield on the rundown. Piciato in left. Deasa in center. Rios is in right. Gillespie at third. Ramirez at short. Beckham at second. Dunn at first. Begley behind the plate. And for Jose Quintana, he is five and three with a 355. He has 99 strikeouts in his 127 innings. 27 and a third now. And he's trying to pick up his defense. If he does, it'll be a nice job by him. The last time, or I shouldn't say the last time, but when the Indians faced Quintana uh, back in Chicago, was that the last time they faced him? I think so, yeah. They jumped him for four runs in the first inning of that game. And interestingly enough, you've got an error here in the first inning. In that game, there was a pass ball that led directly to an Indians run in that first inning. So far, the error hasn't cost him a run, but Swisher's at third base with two down. 1-1 one, one count on Santana. In the dirt, good block by Figley.
Chop foul right off the foot of Santana. Two balls, two strikes with two down and a runner at third. Indians on top, one to nothing. Santana has been pitching well lately in his last five starts. He's 2-1 and one with a 2-41. The White Sox have just had a hard time scoring this year. Offensively, they haven't put it together, and defensively, they've really struggled. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Santana strikes out to end the inning. Indians get a run. They lead it 1-0 after an inning. is brought to you by McDonald's now introducing three exciting new quarter pounders and by Kia one nothing tribe on top as we go to the second inning Paul Canerco Connor Gillespie Diane Viciato do up for Chicago And a strike to Konerko, who's gone three for eight in the series. And quickly the count 0 and 2. Erko steps away. 12 out of 14 pitches already strikes for Corey Kluber. Aggressively attacking. Canerco lifts one in the air, right field. On the gallop is Drew Stubbs. Makes the catch. One away. Tonight's keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Keep the foot on the gas. Well, you know, you you want to, anytime you've got a winning streak, you want to keep it rolling as long as you yeah, can. Especially take advantage of your, your home field, and they have done that. One of the better records in baseball. Indians were just one for five to start out last night's game. 
with two outs and a runner in scoring position, but they finished six for ten. A couple of starts ago, you remember Kluber had a little hip issue that he had to come out of the game where he had pitched five innings, but his last start was a little better. He didn't feel much. Looks like he's pounding the strike zone today, so it looks mm -hmm. pretty healthy to me. I mean, it's still early. A little bit outside. Two balls and a strike to Connor Gillespie. Bounce towards second. Jason Kipnis on the move. Two down. Tonight's Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. This Indians pitching staff since July 9th. The team ERA, 209. Wow. You they posted four shutouts in the month of July. Yeah, and they had some very low hit games. A couple of one hitters, or at least the starters did. They had a couple of two hitters. Missiato, a borderline pitch, called a ball. Weekly bounce to first base. Mark Reynolds will take it himself in a 1 2 3 second inning for Corey Kluber. will lead off the bottom of the second for the Indians. Travel the one nothing lead capitalizing on a leadoff double by Michael Bourne. He went to third on a single by Nick Swisher came home on a ground out by Jason Kipnis. Jose Quintana delivers a first pitch strike. Popped in the air to shallow left. Vicieta was very deep and a long way to go, but he's there. One away. Now, late last night after we left the ballpark, the White Sox consummating a three-way trade that sent Jake Peavy to Boston. 
in the deal. The Tigers end up getting Jose Iglesias. And that's basically protection in case Johnny Peralta gets suspended, which all accounts are that is imminent. And Avicial Garcia, who we saw with Detroit, ends up going to the White Sox. Michael Brantley takes a strike. Brantley takes his time, digs back in. Ground ball in the hole, a base hit for Brantley. Tribe's third hit of the night. And a one-out base runner here in the second. Now the Indians made a deal acquiring left-hander Mark Zepchinski. And with more on that deal, here's Katie with them. Well, Matt, the good thing for Mark Zepchinski is coming to a new team. His last name is a little bit of an icebreaker. He told me that when he was in St. Louis, the guys actually had a nickname for him using Scrabble. It caught on pretty well. Here he's going to try to go by Zep. But interestingly enough, Matt, his original family name when coming over to the United States was 21 letters long. At some point along the way, they just kind of modified it to Zepchinski. And he said, man, I'm lucky it's just 11 letters now. I want to know what they did with those other letters. I think they just cut him off. Throw him away. <laughs> he, he did say that it was German originally, and now his last name is more Polish. So how that happened, he's not sure. His new nickname is now iChart. There's a lot of letters. They shortened it by how many? Well, she said it was originally 21, 21. and it's a, wow. what, 11 now, so they took 10 off. Mark Reynolds sends a high fly ball to left center field. Vicieto, the left fielder, calls for it. Two down. And if you missed it, the, the move the Indians made to get Zepchinski on the roster was to send Vinny Pistano down to Triple A. Terry Francona said, look, we want him to go down there, pitch more regularly, and just get straightened out. He said, you know, he, he battled arm injuries. He inconsistencies, lost his confidence maybe a little bit, and he said it's hard to get a guy consistent work at the big league level yeah. when you're struggling. Yes, it is. And he said, hey, we'd love to get that guy back up here as our eighth inning setup man, but he's got to get himself right again. And Well, if he goes down there with the right attitude and the right frame of mind on working his way back, there's no reason why Vinny shouldn't be. He's a tough competitor. He's done a heck of a job for the Indians the two prior years so I don't see any reason why he can't get straightened out the old one pitch now to Drew Stubbs a little bit low you know the other interesting thing about the trading deadline talking about the anxiety that you know players deal with leading up to that trading deadline remember it wasn't all that long ago where the trading deadline used to be at midnight right so you'd have to go through all of tonight's game still wondering if maybe you'd be on the move or one of your teammates might be on the move moving at the four o'clock at least for the guys playing in the night games they know going into the day it's over put it to rest move forward now we got late too late for the gms they wanted to go to bed <laughs> before midnight it makes sense. That's enough time. You know, you can't rebuild a team with the trading deadline. You may be able to get a player that can help you if you need one player. But, you know, when you start working with the two and three team trades, uh, that's got to be difficult at this time of year because that's what the winter time is for when you have to build your team up. One, two pitch. Found out of play. The GMs have had, you know, when they have their off-season meetings, which are prior to baseball's winter meetings, they've had discussions on numerous occasions in the past of moving that trading deadline to, say, the middle of August. 
Right. You know, more teams fall out, so now you've got more teams that are maybe looking to trade. You know, with adding the wild card, the extra wild card, more teams are in it now. Right. So and it makes it tougher to trade. I think it does. Because, yeah, teams are in it for the longer haul. And, you know, like you say, and people are going to try and hold you hostage if you have a player, you know, that could be a free agent at the end of the year. You want more for him than what he's going to get, you know. If you can't sign him, it, it, it's tough to do. Yeah, the more teams that are available, the tougher it is to make the deal. Two balls, two strikes to count here for Stubbs. Bounces one towards third. Gillespie goes to second for the inning ending force. Two complete. It's the Indians one on the White Sox nothing. For the uh, two-night Rock and Blast Fireworks Spectacular, it'll take place August 9th and 10th. The Indians will host the L.A. Angels, and fans will be treated to an expanded fireworks display. It'll pay tribute to the Rolling Stones' 50th anniversary. Third inning. Indians with a one nothing lead. Gordon Beckham will lead off for Chicago. Kluber looks at a first pitch strike. Popped out of play. And a count quickly 0 and 2. And Corey Kluber just continues to pound away at the strike zone. Well, he's he always seems to be pretty good going 0 2, 1 2 to the hitters. Pounding the zone. He's only walked 25 guys in his 100 and Eight innings of work. Line OT drive, base, base hit. hit into right field. Second hit of the night for Chicago and their leadoff man aboard for the first time. You know, you get to 0-2, and he still wants to make a good pitch, but this one just leaks over the plate. You know, they wanted it away. You see where Santana was sitting, but this one comes in. So a little mistake pitch that Beckham took advantage of, and that's why when you get two strikes as a hitter, you go into protect mode. And if he makes a mistake like uh, Kluber did right there, you get a base hit. Beckham, who struggled recently through an 0 for 20 spell, probably was thinking, it's about time these guys start making some mistakes. Well, that, that's all part of it, man. When, when you seem to be in a slump, they never make a mistake on you. And if they do, you foul it off. 
Yeah. And then when it, when it st starts changing, you get a few hits and you, you get a little luck going your way. They seem to make a few more mistakes and you get into hitters counts. Josh Fegley looks at ball one. Fegley one hit in the series, just two for his last 22 at the plate. Round off to third. Avila's to second for one. Kipnis throw, low throw, dugout by Reynolds for a double play. Well, a nice uh, double play turn and a nice pick at the end of it by Mark Reynolds at first base. The throw from Kipnis a little low, and he backhands it, keeps the foot on the base. And they turn the double play. Very nice. Kip might have been saying, I threw him a little sinker over there to first base, but it's nice when you, you pick it over there. Alejandro Diaz has shortened up as if the bunt, but pulled it back. The last three double plays the Indians have turned now have all been... Five, four, three. They had a pair yesterday. They went around the horn and turn. Now Diaz shoots one to deep left. Back is Brantley. He runs it down. We'll head to the bottom of the third. It's Cleveland one, Chicago nothing. Cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Wow, look at those pants. Is that Jimmy Hanlon? <laughs> it is. Just got done with his round of golf. <laughs> it was. Now you know you're going to get a text from Jimmy here <laughs> in, in a minute or two if he's. I think available. he has those pants, though. He probably. I, I've seen him wear them. I think he borrowed them from him. Michael Bourne doubled and scored in the first. <laughs> Missed inside with it. One and one. Fooled him badly there. One and two to count. Don't 
Bounced that one well in front of the plate. But like Corey Kluber, Quintana's thrown a lot of strikes here at the outset. 21 out of 31 have been strikes to this point. Ooh. Good pitch. Yeah, I think Quintana wanted it. Well, yeah, you, you can see when he looks down and, you know, goes out in front and fixes it. Maybe just a hair outside. And the payoff pitch. Same pitch he got him to swing and miss at earlier in the at bat. Second strikeout for Quintana, one down here in the third. Here's our stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio Buick dealers. Indians won the first game of the series 19 times, and when they do, it usually equals success. Well, that's something that they did a lot last year early, where they'd win the first game, but they just couldn't close out the series. Mm -hmm. Boy, when you win the first game and then you just try to split the next two, that means you're winning series, and that bodes well. Yeah, your goal going into every series is win it. And it's a little harder to win four game series, but the Indians have done that three times this year. The Chicago White Sox were one team they were able to do that to, and right here at home they did it to Seattle. They also did it to Oakland. All three of those were sweeps, weren't they? Four game sweeps. Yeah, that's those what I'm saying. You don't win the series, yeah. you sweep them. Yeah, that's hard to do. But you win the first with no telling what can happen. And the inside a four gamer at Baltimore before they went into Chicago and swept the White Sox in that four gamer. In the four in Baltimore, they earned the split. Yeah, four game series tough to win. And when they did go in and sweep the Sox, they had the Friday night doubleheader. And that's tough to do too, win the doubleheader. Driven fouled on the left side. Well, they've got a big four-gamer coming up next week right here at Progressive Field against Detroit. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes, they do. It's against the, the people they have to catch, too. Swisher lines one down the right field line. That's a fair ball. It's headed for the corner. Nick's on his way to second base. And he'll pull in with a one-out double. He's two for two tonight. Now, he did that once last night where he took a ball down and away and went to left field the other side of the yeah. plate. Tonight, I like that. Right hand, and he's shooting it the other way. This is a high-breaking ball. And that made it a little easier for him to push it that way, but still, that's a nice job. Going down, that's his 18th double. To me, when you're using more of the field as a hitter, that's that's a good thing. Because there's a lot of hits the other way. It keeps you on the baseball, and it keeps you from getting out in front of a lot of pitches. Jason Kipnis takes a strike. This is a guy that had a month of June that I don't know if you'll ever see it any better where he hit 400. And he just consistently used the left field and was driving the ball well. And then for Kipnis. It's um, hard to believe that July's already over. It seemed like it was just last week he was it. finishing that month, you know. Right. And He's hit 281 in July. The month is over. You're right. Tomorrow's August 1st. But in Kipnis, I mean, when you look at his hits by direction, it's so consistent for him, and that's why he's at the 290s flirting with 300 all year long. And he had to, you could throw the first month away for him in April. Out of play, one and two the kill. Jason hit 200 in April, 261 in May, and then 419 in June. And he's followed that up with a very solid month of July. Well, he's just locked in now, and, you know, now you just maintain it. Everything working for him, and his game plan is down. 
Good eye. Two and two. You know, and a lot of time, what got him going early in the month of June, if you remember, he would take a walk or two a game to get him going. He was seeing a lot of pitches. And I think that helped him get it going at the plate as well. Not trying to force everything and get a hit every time up. Take your walks. Be patient. Kipnis strikes out, two down. Third strikeout for Quintana. Here's a look at tonight's trivia question brought to you by AT&T. On this day in 1963, the Indians hit four consecutive home runs in an inning. Name the hitters and the Angels pitcher who surrendered all four. As Dribble Cabrera takes a strike. The 0 1. Missed inside. One ball, one strike. That matchup next week with Detroit shaping up to be a good one because the Tigers are rolling as well. They've won five in a row and nine out of 11. They buried the Nationals today 11 to 1. Well, you look at the, the Royals. I mean, the Indians have been playing well, and the Royals have won seven straight, too, as the Indians have won six, and now Detroit five. So the top three in the Central playing pretty good baseball. As Dribble Cabrera bounced out. To second base with the infield drawn in in the first inning and a runner at third base. He was unable to get that run home from third. Trying to do it the hard way with a two out hit here in inning number three. Nick Swisher in scoring position. His dribble didn't like to call it's two and two. He thought it was up and away. Boy, oh boy, tough pitch. Tough pitch. You don't want to swing on it. He had the count in his favor. That's why you take it. That's upstairs. Full count. Carlos Santana would be next. Quintana, the payoff pitch. Driven but fouled on the left side. He hammered it. It's about all he could do with that pitch. It was coming down and in the 3 2. It looks like a slider inside. And you know, that's in off the plate. And he knew he hit it. And he knew he was also out in front of it. So once again Cabrera takes aim. Swisher at second base. Quintana's 3 2. Driven deep left field down the line. Foul. And hooked just in front of the yellow line. And so Cabrera twice has flirted with that left field line. Both times have been on the breaking ball. I'll be surprised if he sees another one because this one was up as well. And he didn't get it in to where the other one was, and he's getting it closer. I, he either got to throw that fastball down and away at the knees or change up on him down and away. He knows he, he got away with one there. He realizes that. So you've got to re rack him, and you've got to throw him a different pitch. Or bury it on his back foot, one or the other. 
The 3 2. Foul back out of play. Well, he had a couple of easy innings in the first two, having to work a little bit harder here. As Dribble Cabrera locked in right now. Quintana. He fires. And that's fouled out of play again. It's good at bat right here. It's a nice battle going on. Quintana wants to end the inning, but he does have a base open here. Right. He can go ahead and try and make the perfect pitch, but you, you don't want to walk him. You want to get out of it right here. He threw it low. Did Cabrera hold up? No, says John Hirschbeck. He punches out Cabrera to end the inning. And his dribble kicks his batting helmet away in frustration. Fourth inning. Let's take a look at the injury report brought to you by Elk and Elk Serious Lawyers for Serious Injuries. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Miguel Cabrera. He's uh, dealing with, I don't know if it's related to the hip injury. They're calling it an abdomen injury, but anytime uh, the Tigers don't have him in the lineup, it's news. That's for sure. Bad news for Tampa Bay. Matt Moore, very talented left hander. He's been shut down with soreness in the business elbow. Now he's. He's saying he'll be back for the stretch run for Tampa, but boy, anytime you're talking about an elbow, I'm sure Tampa fans are yeah, holding he's... their breath. And Yadier Molina, uh, the Cardinals reportedly have offered Kelly Shopik a deal. Shopik's a free agent. He opted out of his uh, most recent situation. He was in the minor leagues. He had an opportunity to do that. So he's free to sign with anybody. And the Cardinals, they need somebody to catch the ball behind the plate. Michael Brantley hauls that in off the bat of Alexi Ramirez, one away. And speaking of injury news, Katie Witham has the latest on the rehabilitating Josh Tomlin. Yeah, Matt, we mentioned he's back with the club, came to Cleveland yesterday. I had a chance to catch up with Josh today. He told me he's scheduled to throw one inning tomorrow with the Lake County captains. He is on a pitch count limit. He'll only go 25 tomorrow, but he's throwing everything. He says he feels very good and is ahead of schedule, hoping to get back sometime this season, Matt. Thanks, Katie. Great shot of Josh on the bench there talking with Jason Bure, who was a Outstanding pitcher with the Chicago White Sox early in his career and then of course came over to the Indians at the end of his career and has done a nice job working with the Indians in their front office. 
And he's got a lot of wisdom. I mean, he's been around the game a long time. He's pitched with, with a lot of great pitchers, and he's got a lot of stories. He goes around and looks at all the Indians minor league teams and obviously works a with a lot like of pitchers. Tim Belcher does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boy, it would be great to see Josh Tomlin get back in a big league game this year. He's just happy to get out of Arizona. He said he knew all the cactuses by name. <laughs> That's a long stint down there when you're by yourself, you're with the minor leaguers, and you're you're watching every game. He was he would watch every big league game on uh, DirecTV or whatever he had down there. Grounded foul, third base side. He had Frank Herman down there rehabilitating That's with right. him for a while. Was, yeah, Frank was down there for quite a while. I'm wasn't assuming he? Frank's still there. Well, Frank, if you're watching, hello, pal. Yeah. <laughs> There's not much to do. Yeah. Do your rehab, put your time in. And, and there's only so much you can do during the course of a day. You can't speed up the process. Strike three called. Rios punched out. Two down. Third strike out of the night. Rios has words with home plate umpire DJ Rayburn. He went, that's a fastball coming back. So he's staying with that fastball. He's sitting on the inside part of the plate. So when you see that ball coming back, he's really got to stay with that pitch from where he's sitting. You know where his head's on the inside part. That pitch is away and it's coming back. So you have to stay with it all the way in. Adam Dunn takes a look at a ball down low. Dunn out swinging his first time up. Missed in off the plate. And the count two and one. In the air, left field. Back is Brantley. On the track at the wall. Makes the catch right at the 370 mark. And the White Sox go one, two, three. It remains one to nothing, Cleveland. Read Pat McManaman's latest edition of nine innings. What will Carlos Hyde's suspension mean for the Buckeyes? And check out Sam Amico's weekly Cavaliers chat. All today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com.
Carlos Santana to lead off this home half of the fourth for the tribe. And he takes a strike. Santana jammed, rolls it foul, third base side. Indians scored in the first. If you joined us late, it was a leadoff double by Michael Bourne. He went to third on a single by Swisher, came home on a ground out by Kipnis. The only run of this game. Quintana fires, and it's outside. Ball and two strikes. And Santana strikes out for the second time tonight. Yeah, he's, he goes in there early with that breaking ball, and then he seems to go away, something off speed, and get him. He struck out three in a row for the last five hitters. Our great clip of the game from last night, Ryan Rayburn in the clutch. Two-run single put the Indians on top to stay as the Indians roared from behind to win 7-4 last night. Outside ball one. The one one. Rip to left field. That's a base hit. This Yato cuts it off. Avila's a big turn, but he'll hold <laughs> with a one out single. Well, he gets a ball to his liking. That one he tries to run inside, but Avila says, No, you're not getting in there. Nice pulled the hands in, quick swing. BC Yato cuts it off and holds Raver into a single. Avila, excuse me. Michael Brantley, a base hit his first time up. Indians have had a hit in every inning so far tonight. Outside ball one. Michael Brantley's batting average goes up significantly as the stakes get higher. He's a 281 hitter on the year overall. That average jumps to 321 with a runner on base. Jumps to 350 when the runner gets into scoring position. It's outside 2 and 0. Oh. I beg your pardon, 3 and 0. Oh. Well, you're not going to get Michael, or rarely will you get him to swing at a pitch if he has a count in his favor and it's not one to his liking because he's going to make it throw a good strike. Quality strike for him. Avilas takes his lead at first. 3 1 pitch fouled back out of play. Brantley's the guy who puts the ball in play. We'll see. 
Can't really get a good jump, though, on this left-hander, Quintana. No you, no, you can't, and you have to make sure he goes to, to the plate, so you're not going to get a good jump. But Michael doesn't strike out a lot. They shade Brantley in the outfield the other way toward left. Payoff pitch, runner holds, and it's fouled straight back. Quintana fires. And Brantley slugs one toward right center field. That's in the gap. Avilas around second on his way to third. He'll round third. He'll head for home. He will score. Michael Brantley delivers with an RBI double to make it 2 to nothing, Cleveland. Boy, but a nice swing. I'm not sure if that was the fastball or cutter, but he pulls it into the gap. And you had just mentioned that the outfield placed him the other way. So when you do that, you got to make sure you execute your pitches. And that was like a, gosh, I'm going to say a, a cutter or a slider. That's going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it because whatever it is, it got to the wall. And he's going to get an RBI, his 52nd. It'll be an Indians with a 2 nothing lead. And they didn't have to send a Villas, and he's going to score anyway. Now Mark Reynolds fly to left his first time up. Yeah, whatever that last pitch was, it was up and it was out over the plate. You know what happened? You see, you're playing them. You're playing them the other way. So if you're not going to locate that perfectly, that cutter speeds up his bat and that enabled him to pull the ball in the hole away from your defense. So you either go with your good fastball at 93 94 or go with the breaking ball. But that cutter unless it's I mean just perfect he left it middle of the plate. So that's what speeds up the bat of Michael. It wasn't his good fastball. It's just like a little cutter it looked like. And Brantley tees off on and hits it right into the alley. Good shot right there guys. Down to the dirt blocked by Figley. Reynolds taking it's in there for a strike. Turn but nothing doing at second base. Brantley was not too far off the bag. Beckham keeping him close. Reynolds taking a strike one and two the count. Inside knocked him off the dish. Two balls, two strikes with a run in. One out and a man at second base here in the fourth. Shoots it straight back. 92 mile an hour fastball. And the count stays two and two.
Time called as Quintana was taking too much time for Reynolds. And he strikes him up. Six K's for Quintana. Two down here in the inning. Well, swing for the fences with the new home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. It's available on iPhone and iPad, and you can download it free today. The last five outs recorded in this game for Jose Quintana have all been via the strikeout. Sandwiched in between, a couple of doubles and a single, and a run scored for the Indians. But you talk about all or nothing right now, this is it. Ball one to Drew Stubbs, who bounced into an inning ending fielder's choice in the second. Up and away. Yeah, half the Indians hits tonight. Three of their are doubles. The Bourne, Swisher, and then Brantley. Well, a couple of left-handers with the doubles. Popped him up. Shallow right. Out goes Beckham. Called off by Rios. And the inning is over. The Indians get an RBI double from Michael Brantley. And they add to their lead 2 to nothing through 4. The wireless receiver only from AT&T U-verse. Rethink possible. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. We're going to the fifth inning with the Indians leading it two to nothing. Paul Konerko, Connor Gillespie, and Ion Viciedo to bat for Chicago. Corey Kluber has made just 39 pitches through the first four innings. He only needed seven pitches to get through the third. It stands to reason, though, with as many strikes as Kluber throws and the way he started out this game attacking, you're going to get some hitters. We're going to swing the bat early in the count to try and be aggressive against him because he's throwing a lot of strikes. Well, normally you see teams make the adjustment that second time through with Kluber. They'll say, okay, I'm going to start swinging early. You know, you can have some easy innings once you prove you can uh, throw strikes, and you may give up a couple of quick hits early in an inning, but you, you continue to do it, and he's done that for the most part all year. That's the one thing you got to love about Kluber. He, he pounds the strike zone. 
And a fastball strike right there to even the count at one and one. A lot of complaining from the White Sox hitters here tonight already. Canerco still chirping about that pitch. Dunn was complaining last inning before he flied to deep left. Rios was called out on strikes. He was complaining. Swung out and missed at a good slider. This is a good slider. That's what you call swinging over the top. That ball went straight down once it got into the hitting area. And the one-two is grounded just inside the bag. And Konerko has a leadoff single. And Konerko, he wanted to stay on. You get him to two strikes. He stays on the breaking ball, but this is a fastball. And he tried to run it by him inside, and he was ready for it because he shortens his swing. He's not trying to pull it. After that good break of ball down and away, Kluber thought they could get him inside, and they could not. So that's the third hit for the Sox. Connor Gillespie grounded to second base his first time up. Conerco has done that his whole career. You know, that's why he's always been a pretty good high average hitter. Bunt and foul. Well, he had to be doing that for a bunt base hit because with Conerco on base, it's going to take two hits to score him no matter where you get him. Swing and a miss. And a count 0 and 2. Breaking ball, strike three called. Gillespie out looking. Fourth strikeout tonight for Corey Kluber. Yeah, a little breaking, breaking ball away. He gives you that little jab step. Watch the umpire's call. Gives you the little jab step and a quick, he gone. There it is. <laughs> Dion Viciato grounded to first his first time up. Up high with a heater. That's chopped foul, third base side. One and one to count. Indians 10 games over 500 for the first time this year. They've equaled their longest win streak at six in a row. And their nine straight wins at home the most in two years. Down on the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Bluebirds 2-1 is popped back out of play. Series finale tomorrow 
Well, the noon game here at Progressive Field, Indians and White Sox wrap things up. Tribe will head to Miami for the weekend. And then right back home Monday night to take on Detroit. 2 2 pitch. Well, they ran that one in on him with a breaking ball, and Vicieto shoots it right back. It's a breaking ball that starts inside to Vicieto, and he battles. He stayed with it to follow it off. A nice job to live for another pitch. Normally, you look at that breaking ball, you're looking for it to go away from you, not really start inside. The 2 2 again fouled out of play. Mark Reynolds is just destroying those sunflower seeds at first base. Going to go through that whole sleeve this inning. 2 2 pitch. Popped him up. Is it playable? Yeah. Reynolds near the dugout. Santana, they converge. Reynolds makes the play. Two down. Time now for our AT&T U-verse rewind. Clover just moving it around, changing speeds, double play ball. Nice breaking ball. And what is he doing? He's pounding the strike zone as he does. Backdoor breaking ball. He has four strikeouts on the night. And with two down here in the fifth, Gordon Beckham comes to the plate. Singled his first time up. He drives one to center right at Michael Bourne. Inning over. Halfway home, Tribe on top, two to nothing. Lead it two to nothing going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Born Swisher and Kipnis do up for the Indians. Jose Quintana has made 77 pitches through the first four innings. He has struck out six and five of those six have come in the last two innings. Which explains the elevated pitch count. Usually you start striking a lot of guys out and that pitch count will climb. Bourne pops it up foul out of play. So it's 0 and 2 on Michael Bourne who doubled and scored in the first struck out in the third. 
Pitch number 80 on the night coming up here for the Chicago left-hander. Indians have had at least one hit in every inning tonight. Brantley pops it foul. Can anybody get to it? No. no. You don't get any applause for picking it up off the ground. They, they don't. They don't react yeah, well, quite it the doesn't same matter. way. People <laughs> around the stadium don't see it, but he wants those TV cameras. We saw you, pal. <laughs> Tommy Bogey was standing ovation. Oh, of course up in the he booth. did. He also charted that one. Yes, he did. One-two pitch. He used the aquamarine crayon for that category. <laughs> <laughs> <It's good. laughs> no, that's it. purple. That matches coach's <laughs> shirt. <laughs> you can't say anything bad about Tommy tonight. He brought peppers for us. That's right. Frank, thank you. Thank you, Frank, indeed. Those make sandwiches better, pizza better. They make everything better. Chili, hot dogs. Michael Bourne battling down on the count of one and two. Did he go? He did not. In a two and two count now. The two two. Driven toward left center again. Diaz on the run. This one has enough air under it for him to catch it. One away. Yeah, he got him one time. Our in-game recap from your local Toyota dealers. Jason Kipnis with the RBI ground out in the first, getting the Indians' first run of the game. Then in the fourth, Michael Brantley delivering with an RBI double. That brought home Mike Avilas to make it two to nothing. And to this point, Corey Kluber has made it stand up. Nick Swisher two for two, a single and a double. Caught the outside part of the plate. One on one. Back out of play. And now Quintana jumps ahead again. One ball, two strikes. In the dirt, two and two. Swisher, three for ten in the series. I beg your pardon, three for nine in the series. Quintana's 2-2. Two, two. And now a full count. That's his fifth full count in the last 11 batters for Quintana. Payoff pitch. And it's low for ball four. And that is the first walk issued by Quintana tonight. Well, the tribe will host the Angels on August 10th, and the first 10,000 fans will receive a Rocky Calavito replica Hall of Fame plaque. 
It's also the second night of a rock and blast, and it's all courtesy of Progressive Insurance. So log on to Indians.com for your tickets. Now Jason Kipnis 0 for 2 on the night. Pitch outside for ball one. Lob toss to first. Swisher. He just kind of leaned back into the bag. Not much of a lead. He does not have a stolen base this year. In fact, Swisher has not attempted one. One ball, one strike. Here's the one one way outside. So Kipnis ahead in the count as Quintana closes in on 100 pitches for the night. Blowing away three balls and a strike. As Dribble Cabrera waiting on deck. Quintana takes a little time, goes behind the mound, grabs a rosin bag. Third time through the lineup now for the Chicago left-hander. Swisher aboard with one out. 3-1 pitch to Kipnis. Whoa. He thought it was ball four. It's called a strike and now yeah. a full count. You usually want to wait to hear that call. You never want to do that, but. Three one count that ball running away from him. He didn't think he could hit it, so he did disposes of the bat. Next thing you know, it's called a strike. The payoff pitch is ball four. Back to back walks here in the fifth inning. A lot of full counts for Quintana. Most of them resulting in strikeouts until this inning. Now yeah. the last two have gone against him. Well, he may be getting a little tired. He's right around that 100 pitch mark. Well, let's take a look at what else happened around baseball today at the trade deadline. Ian Kennedy. Went to San Diego. Yeah. Bud yeah. Norris to Baltimore. That was a, a fairly sizable deal. And Justin Maxwell goes to Kansas City. I, I guess they're going to have a platoon situation maybe at second base. Well, yeah, you, you never know. That was just something that they felt they had to do. Well, the Indians... Threatening now here in the fifth with two on and one out. There's Dribble Cabrera coming to the plate 0 for 2 on the night. Well, they could use a nice hit right now and open this one up because. Kluber is uh, really throwing a good game. And they've given him two base runners in the inning. Low ball one. Kluber biding his time. He'd love to see some. 
Offensive support here in this inning. Cabrera once again chasing after a pitch out of the strike zone. That's how he struck out in the third. Chased one. Might have been the exact same pitch you know, he chased in the third inning. Down in the dirt. Same spot. He went right back to it to get the strike. That's the one you think you want to put him away on when you get to two strikes because he already chased it once. Now he chases it early. And as a hitter, the more times you see that pitch, eventually you should start laying off of it. One one pitch topped back to the mound Quintana goes to second they get the force out barely Close play barely two down. That was a pretty nice play by uh, by Beckham. Keep the foot on the base and uh, Kipnis was hustling to get into play. I thought he might just take the play at first. Look at Kipnis. He just gets in there and that was a nice stretch. He ended up acting like a first baseman, only playing second. Made a nice play, almost identical to that at second base last night when right. Ramirez went into the hole and uh -huh. threw across to get him. He a sure did. Inning ending force. Well, that's what you turn into. When you have a force out there, you're no longer trying to turn it. You turn into a first baseman, just trying to catch it and step on the base. Well, Carlos Santana has not looked good in his. Two at bats against Quintana tonight struck out both times. And takes a strike here. It's only the second strike, first pitch strike out of the last nine hitters by Quintana. Pitch outside and a count one on one. Dylan Axelrod warming up in the Chicago bullpen. There were some media reports that had him starting tonight's game. Well, he started against, he was a starter earlier this year. Started against the Indians a couple of times. Inside, he missed two and one. Well, Quintana looks like he's about at the end of, end of his rope. Quintana, the pitch count piling up on him here in the fifth. Throw to first, Cabrera back standing. As Drupal on the year, seven stolen bases. He's been caught twice. Yeah, this is when you just stay put and let Santana do the work. Rip to left field, a base hit for Santana, all the way to the wall. Swisher scores, Cabrera into third. It's a two-out RBI double for Carlos Santana and a three-to-nothing Indians lead. Well, another double for the Indians, their fourth, and another two-out base hit. And I think that may do it for Quintana because uh, that that's a big two-out hit. Santana, he struck him out the first two times. He didn't get that breaking ball in. He left it upstairs. And he hung it to him, and he put a nice swing on it and drilled it down the line. So that brings Swisher home, one of the walks in this inning. They have second and third now, and still two men out. Now the big two-out RBI hit that propelled them to victory last night. Helps them add to the lead here in the fifth. Now Mike Avilas, who singled and scored in the fourth. Right back. To the screen. Hammered foul the other way. And the count is now 0 and 2. Avilas with two runners in scoring position in this at bat, trying to come up with a real backbreaker of a hit. Out of play.
That was the 30th pitch of this inning for Jose Quintana, who's working out of the windup with runners at second and third. And that's up high. Safe to say this is the last hitter of the night for Jose Quintana one way or the other. I was surprised uh, that he let him stay in there. To face a Velas. A little jam job towards second ends the inning. Tribe tax on a run. They strand a pair in scoring position, but they lead it three to nothing through five. Coming up tonight on Training Camp Daily. Interviews with try the uh, Browns general manager Mike Lombardi. Offensive tackle Joe Thomas. Hear from cornerback Leon McFadden. Jim Mary Kay and Deke will all be there. Complete coverage of all today's action from Berea tonight at 11:30 on Training Camp Daily. There's a head to head. Wow. Holy smokes. Yeah, well, we saw Quintana with a lot of full counts, but double the pitch count in five innings of work. That's amazing. Now, Kluber's, but, Kluber's been aggressive I'll and he you, stayed aggressive. Yes, that, there's no question about that. He's only given up, though, the three runs, you know, so you're still in a ball game. But Kluber has been in uh, command. Sixth inning, Josh Fegley will lead off here for Chicago. White Sox catcher hit into a double play is only time up back in the third. Ground ball in the hole and a base hit. Chicago has their leadoff man aboard for the third time tonight. Second inning in a row. Let's go back to the Hyundai studios right now for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt, Rick. Well, the Houston Astros are beating up on the Baltimore Orioles tonight. Here in the fourth inning, they score five runs, highlighted by Jason Castro's first Major League Grand Slam. It's nine to nothing. Astros over the O's, bottom of the fifth in Baltimore. Matt? Apparently, Houston uh, didn't like the fact that they traded Bud Norris to Baltimore. So <laughs> taking it out on the Orioles tonight. Well, the, uh, the Astros will be in town here in September. Yeah. We opened up, what, our second road trip and went down to Houston and played them, and they will come here in September. So it has been quite some time. When we get Baltimore here again one more time yeah, in September as well. September. That's right. I think it's, uh, what, second, third, fourth, yep. fifth, something like right that. Right after Labor Day. That's our only East team that we have to play as a three-game series here against Baltimore. No 1 0. Fouled right back.
Kluber with a 1 1. Two balls and a strike. Runner goes, bounce to first, a diving stop by Reynolds. He took a hit away from Diazza right there. A terrific play yes. by Mark Reynolds. Boy, that was a very nice play. And Robin Ventura, he's not going to stay put and look for another double play ball. So he started his catcher, and it's a good thing he did because Reynolds comes off and makes a beautiful diving snap over here, stopping that ball from going in the hole. It would have been first and third. He gets up, steps on the base. Takes a hit away from Diaz and he's got him talking to himself. Did you see him throw oh, his hands up? Like, oh. I can't believe it. So a good play. Diaz now two for twelve in the series. Up comes Alexei Ramirez. Doubled in the first, fly to left his last time up. Too tall, ball one. Rip to left. That's a base hit. Coming around third to score is Fegley. And Ramirez on his way to second base with a one-out RBI double. All right. I mean, that uh, Ramirez is really, he's looked pretty good at home plate in this series. He'll get a base knock. He's two for three. Another RBI. He's 27. So, Sox are on the board now. They're only down two. That looked like a little cutter that stayed up. He's able to turn on it. So a three to one Indians lead now with Alex Rios coming up. And a fastball strike to Alex Rios. Popped up on the infield in the first. Called out on strikes back in the fourth. Two out of nine in the series. Lines it right back up the middle. Bourne charging in center field. They're going to wave him around. Bourne's throw. Cut it. To the plate. Oh, man, they had a Did he cut. touch the plate? I guess he did. You know, Santana a, saying he didn't, but home plate umpire DJ Rayburn said he did. It's a one-run game, and the tying run is now at second base. Boy, I thought if they cut that ball, he was dead at second base, and the throw was low enough to cut by Michael Bourne. He did his job hitting his cutoff man, but obviously you cut it when you hear somebody say cut. But you watch this, and he was a dead duck at second base. I didn't think they were going to get him at home anyway. He was right there. They faked it. He gets in. I don't know if he ever touched the plate. I think his front foot did. I think his front okay. foot just did. Watch the front foot. Maybe. Well, that was close. Well, if it did, then there's no, no question about it. But they had the out at second base, and the throw was cuttable. So the first glitch of the night for Corey Kluber, who was cruising along. And now back-to-back -back RBI hits here in the sixth. Have trimmed the Indians' lead to a single run at three to two. Foul back out of play. Right back up the middle, perfectly placed. The White Sox will tie the game. 
Adam Dunn beat the shift by going the other way. And Chicago with three straight hits here in the inning. Have even the score at three. Boy, that's why I wanted that ball cut. Because, I, you know, more times than not, you, you're not going to get the guy at home plate. And now they have the hit. And this ball, he, he jammed it with that cutter. But they're playing him to pull three guys on the right side. That's where the shift hurts you right there. Shift beats you up. And they tie the game. And next thing you know, they have seven hits. It's a tie game. And they've got the go-ahead run on first. And this guy was breezing through the first five. On the year, though, for Corey Kluber, that third time when you go through the lineup, they hit 321 off him there, three for four. Out of the first four batters going through the third time. Ryan Shaw is going to get loose in the tribe bullpen. Paul Konerko will be the batter. He singled his last time up. Well, and you think back, this all started because Robin Ventura aggressively sent the runner uh -huh. and stayed out of the double play. He did not stay put and, you know, wait back, even though it was 3 nothing. You're in the sixth inning. He started that runner absolutely right. And Reynolds made a beautiful play to retire Deaza. But they've come back with three straight hits and have tied this game up. Waves at it, does Konerko 0 and 2. He's been no match for that Corey Kluber slider tonight. That breaking ball's in the dirt. Santana kept it close enough that Dunn wouldn't try and advance. One, two. Line to third, caught by Avilas. Two down. Well, the Tigers will be back in town for a four game series. That's all starting on Monday. Good seats remain for all games, and it's Sugardale Dollar Dog Night for the August 8th game. So get your tickets early. And Get them at Indians.com, and I mean a big series. you got to come out and watch this. Well, this, this is a serious business now. We'll be in August. Well, it's their last trip in. So. Right. Last four games at Detroit will be in Cleveland. We'll go to Detroit one more time. But, boy, this will be time to make pick up some ground. That's a fair ball. Nice play by Reynolds to scoop it up. Takes it to the bag to end the inning, but Chicago responds. With four hits in the sixth, and they tie the game at three.
3-3, our score, bottom of the sixth inning. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Right-hander Nate Jones coming on for Chicago. Jose Quintana went five innings, and it didn't look good for him, but he winds up with a no decision in the deal thanks to the yes, White does. Sox hitters who came back and put a three spot on the board to tie it up. Brantley, Reynolds, and Stubbs do up for the Indians. Well, so far on the year, though, the Indians have taken advantage of this White Sox bullpen. They have a good bullpen, but their record is 0-7 against the Indians this year with a 784 earned run average. So see if the Indians can continue their success against their bullpen, where the Indians' bullpen's 5-0. and They've just had a lot of luck against the White Sox this year, but their bullpen has been... They've had their number. Yeah. You know, and the, the, when Giambi hit the home run the other day to walk off, that was only the 20th home run given up by their bullpen. That's the fewest. Right. Sec yeah. Is it the fewest or second fewest? Is it still the fewest? Second, second now. Second in the majors. Okay. Michael Brantley fouls it out of play. Fastball away, two and one to count. Well, this kid can get it up there, too, in the high 90s. He's got that long arm, and, you know, he really extends it through the backswing. I don't know if you can pick it up as a hitter, but it gets on you in a hurry. Brantley drives one, deep center. Diazza back and gives way to Viciedo, who grabs it, one away. Let's get the answer to the AT&T trivia question. The four homers consecutively hit, and who gave them up for the Angels? we got a couple of buddies in there that hit them. Woody Held, Pedro Ramos, the pitcher, and then Tito. And Larry Brown were the hitters. Paul Foytak surrendered all four. Mark Reynolds 0 for 2, takes a strike. That pitch hit 99 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, he's 98, 99. And then he goes with an 88 mile an hour slider. You watch it when he separates glove from ball. Yeah, it, it goes all the way back. Like I'm saying, if you're a hitter, I, I, I still don't think he can pick it up, though, because he pulls it straight back, and obviously Reynolds could not pick it up. Two down here in the sixth inning. And the batter will be Drew Stubbs. I mean, you see how high that, that arm comes up. But it's, it looks like it's behind his head, or, and I don't know if it's it's hiding it as a hitter or what you can pick up, but, I mean, it gets on you quickly. And there's that good slider. And when you look at this guy throw, you would think eventually, I don't know if he's got the makeup or anything, but he's got closer-type stuff. Yeah, I mean, just 98-99 alone is, could be good enough to be a closer. Then you add that slider to the mix and could be electric. But does he have, as you said, does he have the mental makeup to right. handle the ninth inning? Pours that fastball in there at 99 miles an hour again. One and two the count on Stubbs. Threw it right by him. The Indians go quickly. 
We go to the seventh, tied at three. with 18 locations in Northeast Ohio and by Levin. Look in at Progressive Field tonight, big crowd on hand. Our Panini Cam brought to you by Panini's Bar and Grill. 3-3 three, three hour score. As we roll on to the seventh inning, bottom third of the Chicago order coming up here. Vicieto, Beckham, and Fegley. And a slider strike over the outside corner. Back out of play. Stairs almost to the pack stop. Two and two. Hit on the ground to short. Cabrera spins from the outfield grass and throws him out one away. Well, bring the whole family out to the ballpark for Key Bank Kids Fun Day every Sunday. Home game this year. It's a lot of fun. They have plenty of activities out there on the plaza. You can also run the bases after the ball game. Get your tickets at Indians.com. Upstairs with the heater. Gordon Beckham one for two on the night. In the air to left field, Brantley. Two down. Get ready for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24-hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for live sports, news, 
Highlights and shows that only Fox can bring you. America's new sports network is Fox Sports 1, coming August 17th. Josh Fegley. Singled and scored in the sixth for Chicago. Pops the first pitch up as Dribble Cabrera, the shortstop, camps under it. And it's an eight-pitch seventh inning for Corey Kluber. 3-3 three, three our score, seventh inning stretch time. Brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Michael Brantley with a terrific job to gap one back in that fourth inning. Carlos Santana shot one down the left field line on the fifth. The double has been key for the Tribe. It was a double by Michael Bourne in the first that led to their first run of the game. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Left-hander David Percy. For the ninth time this year. No wins, a loss. Opposition hitting just 182. Coming on to face the top of the lineup with Bourne, Swisher, and Kipnis. So two out of the three left-handers. Spent some time with... Uh, Toronto, we remember him in Toronto from 2008 to 11, and then also Oakland and also Detroit in 2011. So Jones came on, did his job, one quick inning with a couple of punch outs. Well, this is the part of the game, though, the Indians have been very good here recently. Late in the ball game.
Puts that old stat close and late. Pitch outside, ball one. Well, ended up with a pretty nice crowd tonight because there's fireworks after the game because of that May 31st game with Detroit here that was canceled. So they were able to change their tickets to come out and watch tonight's game if they wanted to. And also another date, I think it was September 6th. Also dollar dog night here. Wasn't that the night we ended up uh, Detroit? I thought it was the game that we had. It, it didn't get rained out, but it was long. It was and raining. And they canceled and the fireworks. That, yeah, that's right. I thought you meant the game was canceled. The no. fireworks show was canceled yes. because we didn't get done till I forget. It was late. Yeah, well, we never got into Boston that night until like 4 in the morning. Yeah. So whatever the date was. 2-1 pitch. Low and outside. So Michael Bourne's in a good spot here, three and one. Well, get that lead off man aboard. That's what you want to do. Percy lays it in there. Full count. Bourne taking all the way. Outside, ball four. And the Tribe has their leadoff man aboard here in the seventh. The way, way back. This summer's movie with something for everyone now playing. Nick Swisher has single, doubled, walked, and scored a run tonight. The left fielder, Dion Viciedo, playing Swisher as a dead pole hitter in left. Deaza in center, shading him a bit toward left. And a huge gap in right center. Takes a fastball for a strike. In this nine-game winning streak that the Indians have here at Progressive Field, from the seventh inning on, they have outscored their opponents 11 to four. Well, they've been doing a much better job scoring late. You know, there for a while they were the, they they would get the early lead, but they weren't scoring a lot late. But they're starting to they're starting to find it from the seventh inning on now. And Swisher's called out on strikes. One away here in the seventh. Percy comes back and makes his pitch. That breaking ball right there. Swisher could not pull the trigger. Locks him up. He will go down for the call out. There he is. Look at the umpire slide step. Yeah. Overall on the year, the Indians have still been outscored by 19 runs in the seventh and 11 runs in the eighth. But they're starting to turn that trend around. They scored again tonight in the fifth inning, and they lead the majors with 90 runs scored in the fifth inning. That, that's that been their calling card all season long. Jason Kipnis 0 for 2 with a walk.
Down in the dirt, good block by Fegley, picked it clean. One ball, one strike. Bourne being held at first by Dunn and Percy keeping a close eye on him. Up and in, almost hit him. I don't know if that was a changeup or he got underneath a breaking ball. But whatever, I mean, it stayed in there. It looked like it was a breaking ball. He just didn't break. Two one count. Now we're even up at two and two. Terry Frank Kona, his club had a three to nothing lead before Chicago came back with a three spot in the sixth to tie it. Gipness looks at a ball up high and a full count. As Dribble Cabrera waits on deck. It'll be interesting to see if Michael can get a read on anything from Percy. If he does, you, you can send him here. Let him run. I don't know if he can get a read on him or not. Weekly tap towards second base. They get one there and they turn the double play. Seven in the books. We're tied at three. written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Three, three, our score as we go into the eighth inning now. Corey Kluber still only made 80 pitches on the night. There is activity in the bullpen if they should so desire to go that route. But other than the sixth inning, the Kluber has really dominated this White Sox lineup tonight. Top of the order due up here. You see Cody Allen and Rich Hill getting loose. Alejandro Diaz 0 for 3 tonight. Back out of play. Now Corey Kluber has stayed true to form. He's been aggressive. He has not been behind a hitter 2 and 0. And he hasn't had a full count in this game tonight. 
Well, uh, that that's why he's at 80 pitches and he's going into the eighth inning. I mean, that's uh, that's outstanding. His pitch count deep into the game. That one little inning, a couple of hit cups, and it's not that they were bad pitches by any means. Routine bouncer to second base, and Kipnis throws out the Azo one away. Well, as that bullpen is firing up right now, Katie Witham has the latest on the uh, reshuffling of the tribe's bullpen. Well, Matt, I had a chance to speak with a number of the guys in the Indians clubhouse today, and they all told me the same thing. They were absolutely shocked when they found out that Vinny Pistano was the guy being sent down. But obviously, they hope it helps in the long run because this gives Vinny a chance to get in some quality work. And when he comes back, hopefully he'll look like the Vinny we saw in 2011 and 2012. In the meantime, they said they could use that lefty in the bullpen. And Zepchinski is a guy that has playoff experience. Absolutely. He pitched very well for the Cardinals in the World Series a couple of years ago. So, you know, he's got that experience, and, you know, we'll have to wait and see how Terry Francona chooses to use him. Well, it gives you another lefty out of the pen, which is certainly going to help you. Now, if he can come in and, and, and pitch, throw quality strikes and help you out, that, that gives Terry another weapon coming out of the pen. And a slider, good one in there at the knees for a strike. It's 0 2. Look at that. You talk about keeping your pitch count down. That's outstanding. The 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Corey Kluber with another seven pitch inning. 1 2 3 go the Sox. We stay tied at three. Stay tuned for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It comes your way right after the ball game. Bottom of the eighth inning is Dribble Cabrera. Carlos Santana, Mike Avilas do up for the Indians. Left-hander David Percy, who worked out of the seventh, will stay on to pitch the eighth. As Dribble Cabrera is 0 for 3 on the night. Down and in for ball one.
I don't like that one. Get nope. it out of here. Throw it to the side. Two zero pitch. High pop. Foul territory. And Ramirez has it one away. Our in game box score brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. As I mentioned earlier, the, the double has been the Indians' scoring me uh, method tonight. The, the leadoff double by Michael Bourne led to their first run of the game. An RBI double by Brantley in the fourth made it two to nothing. An RBI double by Santana in the fifth made it three to nothing. But that's been it offensively as far as getting them across the dish. Carlos Santana. Fouled right back. One ball, one strike. Again, you look over at the third base, you see Gillespie on the line. Really close. They did that last night, and the Indians were able to get a base hit. But he's on the line again tonight in the tie ball game. One one pitch way outside. The two one delivery now is hit high in the air. Shallow right field Rios. Will make the catch two down. And now up comes Mike Avilas. Mike Avilas one for three on the night. He singled and scored back in the fourth inning. Breaking ball in there for strike one. Navilas hit his sixth home run of the year three days ago against Texas. Sent one to the home run porch and left. Outside one and one. Well, anytime you get into this part of the ball game, you, you're not going to mess around a whole lot inside. You're going to try and make them use the big part of the field. One hopper to second base. Beckham throws him out. The Indians go one, two, three. We go to the ninth, tied at three.
3-3 our score. Corey Kluber is going to pitch into the ninth inning here tonight. He had one bump in the road, and it came in the sixth inning. Alexi Ramirez with an RBI double. And then a key play right here. You thought this ball should have been cut off. I do. I mean, you're not going to throw many guys out from center field. Cut it, and it was a cuttable play. Of course, you've got to be told to do that, and, and you got the guy at second base, and there's your tying run that scored right there on the following base hit, and that was just a little ground ball through because they had three guys on the right side of the field. Kluber, meanwhile, other than that, has been very good tonight. Yes, he has. He's been dynamite. Adam Dunn will lead it off one for three. I called strike. In the air to center field, Michael Bourne. Drifting back onto the track, and he makes the catch one away. That's the second time tonight that big Adam Dunn has set one onto the warning track. Well, Corey Kluber has pounded the strike zone. He's had an outstanding slider, the two seam fastball to go with his cutter. I've seen a couple change ups lately. He's got a good change up. I, I don't think he uses it enough, but that backdoor slider there, he has five strikeouts on the night. And has allowed seven hits. Paul Konerko has one of them. Back in the fifth inning. Inside out swing. Fouled out of play. Oh, and two. Well, and he's just consciously just th trying to think other way with Kluber because of that good breaking ball. The hit he got in the fifth, Kluber had him swinging at a breaking ball away, and he tried to stay back. And, and then Corey tried to throw the fastball by him inside, and he just goes out and slapped it the other way down the first baseline. Here's the 0 2 from Kluber. Swag out and missed. He got him with a slider. His sixth strikeout of the night, two down in the ninth. Comes right back with that slider right there. Excellent location, and you get Canerco to chase it, and he's concentrating on taking that ball the other way and still can't stay back enough. That tells you how good the spin of it is and the break straight down, out number two. Down low, ball one. Connor Gillespie 0 for 3 on the night. Two and oh the count. And a line drive single to left. Gillespie's aboard with two outs in the ninth inning. We'll take a look back at our Akron Children's Hospital keys to the game. Well, offensively, they got off to a good start, but they weren't able to add on. They had some chances to maybe put this game on ice, but couldn't get the clutch hit. And that's illustrated in that one for five with two outs and runners in scoring position. That's going to be it for Corey Kluber. Terry Francona will go to the bullpen with two outs here in the ninth and a man on first base. Kluber did a nice job tonight. And the crowd appreciates the effort.
Stay tuned for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Cody Allen on for the 46th time this year. Well, Allen comes in with two outs. I'll tell you what, Kluber, he, he pitched a whale of a game tonight. He had 10 0 2 1 2 counts on the night, did not walk anybody, struck out six. I still think he could have finished this inning off. To be honest with you, because he, he was he still was crisp with his fastball and he had good bite to his breaking ball. I think he could have got Viciato. But Frank Kona says, nope, I'm gonna go to my bullpen. Here comes Cody Allen. Let's go. You did a good job. Thank you very much. Fastball fouled out of play. Swung on and missed. Elevated fastball that time, and at 97 miles an hour, Viciato was not going to catch up to it. This big crowd, close to 30,000 here tonight. Up and roaring. The 0 2 pitch. Ooh. He swung at the previous pitch that was roughly in the same spot. That time he laid off. The runner at first, Cotter Gillespie. Line up the middle of the base, hit to center field. Gillespie will go to third. And Viciato keeps the game. Rolling for Chicago here. Well, he figured, it's, all right, we've got to back him off because we threw him some fastballs, but let's see where the breaking ball is at. I mean, look at that. I can see bouncing it, but you don't want to leave it up in the zone there. That was easy for him to hit it the other way. He's a strong guy and just smokes it through the infield. So they will have runners at first and third now and two outs. And now Gordon Beckham. One for three on the night. Beckham loves that fastball up, and he'll take it the other way. We get a pinch runner. Jordan Danks will run for Viciato at first base. Danks just called up today. Beckham singled to right back in the third inning. He lined to center. In the fifth, lie to left in the seventh. Fastball outside corner, a called strike. Beckham digs in. Francona nervously watching along with Corey Kluber. First and third for Chicago. A toss to first. Back is Danks. The Tigers won earlier today, pasting Washington 11 to 1. 
The one one pitch. Up high two balls and a strike. Go ahead, run is at third base and Connor Gillespie. Two and one, the count on Beckham. Ninety-seven mile an hour fastball, and it looked awfully good, but it's called a ball, and it's now three and one. Trying to go inside with the fastball and not give him any swinging room, and that was in off the plate. So now behind in the count three and one. He walked him and the bases are loaded. Well, Allen's given up a hit and a walk. And now nowhere to put Josh Fegley. Mickey Callaway is going to go out and talk to Cody Allen. Well, we this is one of those situations where, you know, you go back to last night, perfect managing. You look at the, the moves that, that Terry Francona made late in the game. You pinch run, you steal a base. It, it all, when the players execute, it all looks really good for the manager. When you pull, well, put a guy in and he doesn't execute, it all comes back to the manager. Why'd you take Corey, you know, Corey Kluber well, out and all that? That all comes back to bite you. The difference last night, we were looking on the offensive side of the ball. Tonight, it's pitching. And so the pitchers are coming in. When you bring that bullpen and they do their job, bingo. You know, uh, when he doesn't, Kluber made a bad, or excuse me, Allen made a bad pitch when he had uh, Viciato down. To, you know, two strikes. He hung him a breaking ball and he slaps it the other way and then he walks Beckham. But he yeah. can still get out of the inning, but he's got to face a pinch hitter now. Jeff Kepinger will hit for Josh Figley. And this guy is always a tough out. On the year, Kepinger's hitting just 234. 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. And in his last eight games, just three for 31. Fastball low, ball one. White Sox everywhere you look here in the ninth inning. Well, you got to be aggressive. You got to throw strikes. And right now, he is nibbling. He's not going after the hitters. And Santana's talking with home plate umpire DJ Rayburn. I think he was telling him that that's a strike. Now the 2 0. And now he's getting squeezed 3 0. Finally calls a strike. It's three and one. <laughs> That's into the crowd. And finally saying, don't be afraid to put up the right hand. He's got to throw another one just like it. 
And if you're Kepinger, you're going to be looking for it. But you got to challenge him. Bullseye, full count. Everybody up on their feet now. Bases filled with two down in a tie game in the ninth. The 3 2 pitch. Line drive, base hit, center field. White Sox take the lead. Gillespie scores. Here comes Danks. 5 3 Chicago. Well, you, no news. You're coming with the fastball. That's all you could throw for a strike. And Kepinger had a good look at two of them. And here comes another one. He gives him some swinging room, and he's going to take it and shoot it right to the right field. That's exactly what he was looking for. Fastball away, down, hits it, put a good stroke on it. Two runs will score, and the White Sox take a 5-3 lead here in the top of the ninth. So a big pinch hit there for Kepinger and the White Sox. And uh, Kluber on the line because he gives up the first run. He's on the hook. Top of the order now, Alejandro De Aza. And a strike called. De Aza 0 for 4 on the night. And now it's 0 2. Bounced it in front of the plate, Santana. Got the body on it. White Sox with two here in the ninth. There were two outs, nobody on base. Corey Kluber gave up an opposite field single to Connor Gillespie, and then Terry Francona went to the bullpen. And Cody Allen a hit, a walk. And a two run single. And it's now two and two on Diaz. White Sox closer Addison Reed ready for Chicago. Two two pitch out of play. With some command issues here in this ninth inning. The 2 2 swung out and missed. White Sox take the lead 5 to 3 as we go down to the bottom of the ninth.
to field. Indians down a pair now. Five to three the score. And the new pitcher is Addison Reed. The right-hander four and one on the year. 26 out of 30. He has converted into saves. He's got the bottom third of the Indians order due up here. Michael Brantley. Jason Giambi has moved to the on-deck circle to bat for Mark Reynolds. Tyler Flowers takes over behind the plate for the White Sox. Alejandro Diaz moves from center field over to left. And Jordan Danks, who came on as a pinch runner, is now in center field. Brantley is two for three on the night with an RBI double. And 12 of 26 uh, of Addison Reed's saves have been one, two, three innings. This guy has a good arm as well. So the Indians, you need that leadoff man aboard because they're down two to get that tying run to the plate. Reed blows a fastball in there for strike one. Up high with a heater. Now two balls and a strike to count on Michael. Yeah, this is a good guy to have leading off the inning. He'll take a lot of pitches. He'll make them get in the zone. Brantley hammers one right field. And a one-hop defense. Brantley on his way to second base with a leadoff double. Well, it's been the night of the double for the Indians. A good at-bat by Michael. Had the count in his favor. He wasn't going to spot him another fastball. And he turned on it. He was waiting. He gets it. And there you go. Bingo. Fifth double of the night by the Indians. And that's the leadoff double. Now the tying run comes to the plate. Brantley three for four in the ball game. And now Jason Giambi will pinch hit here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Giambi opened this series with a pinch hit game winning home run. One on and missed. And Giambi knows he had one to hammer right there and just missed it. He didn't miss this one though in the series opener. A walk off game winner. The oldest player in Major League Baseball history to hit a walk off home run, Jason Giambi, who was just a little bit older than Hank Aaron. Reed misses down and in. One ball, one strike. Giambi, who has 127 at bats on the year, but seven home runs, 24 ribbies. His presence has been invaluable, but he's also had some big hits. Now the 1 1. Popped out of play. And a count 1 and 2. Read the one two hit him. Ouch. He hit him with a pitch and now the tying run is aboard and the winning run is coming to the plate and we'll get a pinch runner now for Giambi as Lonnie Chisholm will come on to run. So the big guy gets on the hard way 
as that fastball came up and in and well, just plunked him. You know what? And he he wasn't really going to try and get out of the way. You don't want to get hit. But Giambi has been hit many, many times in his career. And I'll tell you what, take a look at how he's not going to jump out of the way. He just left it right there, took it off the elbow. Holy smokes. He didn't look at it. Thank you. Let me go to first. Down with two strikes. That's huge right there for the Indians. Now the tying runs aboard. And you got Drew Stubbs up. Don Cooper, the pitching coach, goes to the mound for Chicago. Drew Stubbs will be the batter. Michael Bourne on deck. All you ask for is a chance. A chance in the last at bat, and you've got that now. Stubbs 0 for 3 on the night. Well, they go over what they want to do. They're expecting a bunt here. You can see him pinching in at the corners. We'll see what kind of defense they want to use. Brantley at second can run pretty well. Chisholm Hall average at first. Stubbs has two sack bunts on the year. Yeah. I mean, it calls for a bunt here. No question. We'll see. He squares. He bunts it up in the air. It gets it down, though. Reed, barehand throw. Not in time. Oh. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Holy smokes, he beat it out. Again, we've said it how many times before. Sometimes you play to get a run across and you can have a big inning. And now Robin Ventura wants to question that call at first base. And I'll tell you, Stubbs put it down. It was a nice sacrifice. But it had a little spin on it. Now, Addison Reed, bare hands, he jumped on that ball in a hurry. Oh, boy. Bang, bang. Bang, bang is right. I'll tell you, that's about as close as you can get at first base. Ow. The Indians get a call. And Stubbs just put his head down and let it go. That's uh, it's too hard to tell. But they have the bases loaded, nobody out. That'll go as a base hit. And Michael Bourne is the batter. One for three on the night with a double. On ball one up high. Everybody up on their feet. Michael Brantley, who just recently hit his first career grand slam when we were out in Seattle. He just take a base hit right here. Tie it up. Move it along. Out of play to the left. Boy, this crowd right back into it, man. That, uh, you can't start it any better. Brantley got it going. A double. He hit Giambi when he had two strikes on him. And then the bunt on a bang bang play. And Reed in hot water right now. The 1 1. Out of play again. Tough to catch up on that 95 mile an hour heater. The one two. Bourne shoots it foul the other way out of play again. <laughs> They've got activity in the tribe bullpen. That's Chris Perez just in case they go to extra innings. The one two. In tight. That's a good pitch. You got to keep him from leaning. You see where Michael is trying to get out over there and just hit anything he can. Well, you got to straighten him up. And he does just that. This crowd roaring now. And the 2-2 two -two to Bourne. In the air. Center field. Back goes Danks. Still going back. Makes the catch in the middle of the warning track. Tagging and scoring is Brantley. Everybody else tags and moves up as well. It's a one run game as Michael Bourne picks up his 33rd run batted in on the year. 
on a huge sack fly to the deepest part of left center field. That's about as productive an out as you will ever see. I was just going to say, Matt, you could not have a more productive out because everybody moves up a base. Now they get their first out. But the tying run is at third base. The winning run is at second. Swisher has an opportunity. And now the infield wants to go over and talk with everything with flowers behind the plate. Reed. They're trying to get on the same page. Nick Swisher had a series to remember in Chicago. He had a game-winning home run, and then he came back with a game-winning hit right up the middle in the uh, following game. So he's uh, well. They're he's coming had some in. dramatic they're hits coming into the cut of the grass to try. Oh, they're going to put Swisher on. It's going to be up to Kipnis. Wow. Yeah, they're going to put him on. Here we go. They want the double play if possible. So that's a intentional walk. I tell you what, I I as an as somebody, if you're watching this from the Indian standpoint, you got to love this move because that guy right there, he's got a slow burn going right now. Well, he's played with a chip on his shoulder his whole life because he's always been told, you're not this, you're not that, and all he's done is prove people wrong his whole career. Yeah, I, I don't think they're looking at the person as much as they are the situation and trying to get a double play and setting up that inning. Um, you know, percentages say go ahead and do that. Although they are up the run, I thought they were going to go ahead and maybe pitch the Swisher and maybe go for a strikeout if he didn't want to swing. Then you walk him. But now with the intentional walk, it puts more pressure on the pitcher. He can't afford to make any bad pitches. No, he, he, he can't afford to fall behind. So it almost well. makes you look early in the count if you're Jason Kipnis. Swisher takes the free pass. Down to first he goes. The bases are loaded with one out. And the Indians down a run. At five to four. Meeting on the mound as they talk things over. Tyler Flowers, Addison Reed discuss the game plan. Jason Kipnis. Is 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. Well, no room for error for the Sox. I mean, they're going to uh, turn two up at the middle of the field. They're going to come to home plate at the corners. And Kipnis has a chance to win it. He also has a chance to tie it. Chisholm holds the tying run at third base. Drew Stubbs the winning run at second. Inside ball one now if you're a base runner in this situation you take your lead and you don't get a secondary lead You don't have to worry about it because you have to freeze on any line drive You never ever can get doubled up here. You just go back and tag up so get your lead and stay put Strike at the knees one on one to count Just right. didn't like it. Well, he comes back and throws a breaking ball It's not one you want to swing at anyway I mean, it's there. Ooh. It's low, but it's 1-1. One, one. Not one you wanted to swing at. 1-1 one, one pitch. A little bit high. Two balls and a strike. Bases loaded. One out. Bottom of the ninth. Tribe down a run. And the 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. That'll even the count. He got his fastball. Yes, he did. Might have tried to swing a little too hard, maybe. Well, he just got to put it in play. The 2 2. High fly ball. Right field, Rios back, still going back on the track, makes the catch. That'll tie the game. Jason Kipnis with his 64th run batted in on the year with a sack fly. And we are dead even at five apiece. And the winning run now at third base with two down. Tell you what, that's uh, a good inning for the tribe to come back. A pair of sacrifice flies by your leadoff hitter. The intentional walk, Kipnis does his job. That's big to get two runs and tie it up. 
Just really good execution. Yeah, it, it is. And they have a chance to win it now if they can do it with two outs. You got great base running over there. You could send your runner. They're not going to throw through if you want. It doesn't matter. The winning runs at third base. As Dribble Cabrera will be the batter 0 for 4 on the night. Swisher takes off. Cabrera way out in front on the breaking ball. I don't know if that's going to go. They were playing behind him, so I don't think that is a stolen base. Indifference. Drew Stubbs, the winning run at third base. The 0-1 pitch outside to even the count. All season long, this team has been able to ride the wave of the two-out RBI hit with runners in scoring position. Well, he has first base open, so he doesn't have to give in to Cabrera. Started him off, change up. You're just going to show him the fastball. And you can attack him with all the off-speed pitches you want, and he's out in front again. One ball, two strikes, with two on, two out in the bottom of the ninth. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. We've got extra innings. The Indians rally with two in the bottom of the ninth to tie the game at five. Presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Feed Your Wild Side. Five five as we go to the tenth inning. Chris Perez will come on now for the Indians. Thirty third appearance on the year. He's got three wins and a loss, and an ERA of two forty eight. He'll be dealing with the two, three, and four hitters for Chicago here. Defensively now for the Indians, some changes. Jan Gomes has come into the ball game. He'll take over behind the plate. Carlos Santana goes to first base. Alexei Ramirez, Alex Rios, and Adam Dunn do up. Play. Bat went flying over toward the Indians on deck circle. Yeah, 
Well, you can see the pine tar, you can see the gloves, but you see the swing, and that bat just came flying out of there. This one didn't make the seats. Stayed in play, hits the screen. Perez has had his number, but Ramirez lines this one to deep left. Brantley makes up for it, running it down for out number one. He put a good swing on it. Kept his hands back, hit a line drive, and a nice play by Michael Brantley as he tracks it down. He's made a number of plays on this home stand like that, to, uh, you know, like that one right there. Alex Rios, one for four on the night. Single and a run scored. RBI back in the sixth. Check swing, liner to first, two down. Bring up big Adam Dunn, one for four on the night. Got did it him. hit him? I yeah. think it did. did. Yeah, it got him on the back leg. Sure did. Looked like a slider that got him on the thigh, on the back thigh. So a two-out base runner. Well, that slider right on the knee. Ooh, got the, on the back knee. knee. Yeah. Hello. Is what he did. He'll feel that one tomorrow. Paul Konerko tried to dig it out, and he fouls it away. Paul Konerko is single back in the fifth inning. Four hits in the series. Four for 12. And it's 0 2. This crowd's been through the ringer in the last inning. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Up and down. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Outside. Went from the depths of despair to near delirium, all in the ninth inning alone. Got him looking. Canarco called out on strikes and will go to the bottom of the tenth. Tied at five.
Bottom of the 10th inning tied at five. New pitcher for Chicago. Their fifth pitcher of the night, right-hander Dylan Axelrod. He's been a starter all season long. In fact, as I mentioned earlier tonight, there were some media reports that put out that he was starting tonight. tonight's game. But he's coming out of the bullpen now. He'll be facing Carlos Santana, Mike Avilas, and Michael Brantley. Santana is one for four on the night. He had an RBI double back in the fifth inning. Breaking ball and this is up high for ball one. Santana's last home run came on July the 7th off Doug Fister of the Detroit Tigers. This of course the final game in the month of July. The 2-0. He was swinging for the downs and he gained the change of pace pitch, two and one. Well, this is a guy that adds and subtracts very well, Axelrod. You know, he doesn't like to give in. He's not going to overpower you. He's going to move it around, change speeds. Three so balls and a strike. You have to remain patient. You have to stay on the baseball, and you have to use the whole field. If you try and pull him, you're doing him a favor. Caught the outside corner, full count. Well, backdoor breaking ball to run it to three and two. Payoff pitch. Fastball drilled. Deep right field. Back is Rios. He's out of room. It's out of here. Santana and the Indians magical ride continues then you just say his last home run was the 7th of July no longer it's the last day of July and he can end it boy oh boy the magic is back Second time in this series. The Indians win with a walk-off homer. Carlos Santana with a laser beam shot out of here to right field. And the Indians come back to win it 6-5 to five after they fell behind 5-3 to three in the top of the ninth. Two in the bottom to tie it. One in the tenth to win it. Well, this big crowd got a lot of great baseball tonight, especially late. They had all the drama you could look for in a big league baseball game. Time now for our key play of the game, brought to you by KeyBank. Well, Santana stayed back, was patient in this at bat, and he just drives a ball. Line drive. You haven't seen a nice short swing like that. He didn't get too long. He got it into the seats. He makes the happy trot around the bases. Another walk-off win. Number nine for the Indians. And their magic continues in this ballpark. The homestand has been perfect. That's going to be our key bank, key play of the game. You get a free Kindle Fire HD when you sign up for a new checking account. Some restrictions apply. The executive producer for Sports Time Ohio is Tom Farmer. Coordinating producer is Steve Warren. Tonight's game produced by Jim Murphy, directed by Pat Murray. Indians Live produced by Mike Bachman. Our associate producers are Mike Pachta and Steve Bardo. Technical director Dan Larson, creative consultant Mark Koha. For Rick Manning and Katie with him, I'm Matt Underwood. Stay tuned for Indians Live. We're going to go back and relive the drama of this big win for the tribe here tonight. <laughs>